coach, Northwest Division champion to secure home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs. How does that sound? Oh, it sounds great. Yeah, I, I think we got a lot of excited players in there. And uh, the thing I told them, I said, you know, our division, in my opinion, is the toughest division in the NBA. And to be, I think, 12 and two or whatever we are in the division, and to clinch tonight, uh, that that is a great, you know, achievement for us. But more importantly, we're not satisfied. You know, enjoy it, division, home court. Um, but we have, you know, three more games to go and then playoffs to prepare for. Uh, but proud of our guys. That fourth quarter was great. And obviously, I think Torrey Craig deserves a game ball. He was phenomenal. His defense, his offense, everything he did out there. So um, they're a good team. And uh, to, to beat them on our home court in front of a great crowd you know, it was a really enjoyable night. You mentioned the fourth quarter. You guys were down going into that quarter. Mm -hmm. And you found a way once again to close out the game and win it. How did you do that? Well, in the third quarter, we played absolutely zero defense. I mean, they scored 37 points. And I think they were all in the paint or from the foul line. And they were just living in our paint. Just challenging our guys. I said to him, if you want to win the game, we've got to pick up our defense. So we can't just let them get to the rim at ease and get to the foul line so much. And in the fourth quarter, obviously, they only scored 23 points. So, you know, all year long, we've been a very good fourth quarter defense. Tonight, it showed out again. And anytime you can hold Damian Lillard to 3 of 14 from the field and 0 of 6 from 3, that means that Gary and Torrey are doing a great job. He missed some open looks, but I thought Gary and Torrey, that tandem was phenomenal in terms of guarding him, as well as our bigs being open all those pick and rolls. You mentioned Torrey's performance already yeah. tonight, but Monte, Malik, the guys off the bench, mm -hmm. again, came in and made really big plays for you. What did you see from them? Yeah, they were great. I mean, uh, we, we made runs with those guys on the floor. Obviously, Monte, I got a little nervous in that first half of matchups. We were so small, they were so big, they put them in the post. But I thought Monte to start that fourth quarter was tremendous. <laughs> Didn't miss a beat, came out there, was aggressive. Him and Nicola playing off of each other. Malik had a couple of really big baskets, you know, and uh, it was tough taking those two out of the game. And I put Jamal and Gary back in. You know, that's how, you know, well both uh, Malik and Monte were playing for us. Nicola scored up 10 points the first three and a half minutes of the fourth quarter. Was that his doing, or did you get on him, or was that just his sort of taking it upon himself? Oh, I, I yelled at him said, you got to score 10 <laughs> points. <laughs> you should have heard it. It was a really fiery approach. No, I think it's, you know, on me, you know, calling plays to get him the ball, but him understanding what time it is. It's time for our best player to show up and carry us and put us on our back, and I just loved how aggressive he was. Um, they were crashing the glass. They were trying to get extra rebounds, and that was something we kept on harping on, but... Uh, Nicole is a big game player, and when we needed him most, I thought he stepped up in a big way, along with every other player. Paul Millsap, we haven't even mentioned him. Paul had a phenomenal game. His best game in probably uh, maybe the last week to 10 days. So uh, to see a lot of guys have good nights was great to see, and uh, three more to go. You put Nicole in with, I think, 343 to go in the third and brought him out the rest of the way. What can you just say? Is that kind of conditioning that he has to do that right now to play so well throughout 15 straight minutes on the court? Is that an improvement for him in terms of that that aspect of it, that conditioning part of it? Well, it's also the long timeouts on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> Those definitely help us three five-minute timeouts. But, yeah, I think it also speaks to him uh, being able to play at a high level for 15 straight minutes and understanding you know, the importance of this game. We did not want to have to go to Portland to try to – win and clinch and all that. Do it here. And, and we have, the, I think, tied now for the best record, home record in the NBA. So do it here in front of our fans. They deserve that. In the third quarter, we didn't look like a team that really wanted it. But in that fourth quarter, we just you know, turned the tables and guys off the bench and Nicola, uh, you know, down the stretch, Torrey Craig. It was, it was fun to watch and a great win to get. Has the fourth quarter defense become a focal point? I mean, it's got to be more than coincidence. It happens too many times. You guys lock down in the fourth. Would you like to see that maybe a little earlier in the game? Well, I think, uh, you know, since the All-Star break, we have the number four defense in the NBA. So I think we've been defending at a high level uh, most most games. Obviously, tonight, there were definitely ups and downs. Third quarter was definitely a down moment for our defense. Uh, but game 79, and we've had the number one four, uh, fourth quarter defense in the NBA. And I think that's something we always talk about. you got to win the fourth quarter, try to hold them below 20 points. And your defense has to be at its best when the game is on the line. And tonight, I think we have some really good examples of that. How important is it that Paul Millsap can know when he needs to assert himself and when not to and flip that switch? Because in the first half, things were a little clunky to start, and he really manufactured those points. For him to be able to really change the game like that, how important is that? Well, it's important when you have a lot of guys that are struggling. Right? I mean, a starting group did not get off to a great start. 
and I thought Paul was really good. He scored for us, and I thought guys off the bench gave us a lift. Uh, Mason Plumlee's energy time was off the charts, and that's what you expect from Mason every single night. But you know, Paul goes out there and gets 25 and seven, um, and a hell of a performance. Nine of 12 from the field, and we got to the foul line tonight. That's what I like: 29 free throws. We've got to get that kind of attack mentality and get to the rim as much as we can, and get to the foul line as much as we can. To your talk about you know you're shooting 30 percent um, in the. Twenty or thirty percent in the first half, from three point. But you know, you got to the line eighteen times in the first half. Right. You know, they got to the line four times. Yeah. Talk about you know your bench. You got Corey Craig. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, anytime, anytime you're struggling to make jump shots, you know, you, you can't continue to just settle and shoot threes. You have to be be aggressive uh, and get to the rim. See the ball go in the basket, get an easy layup, or get to the foul line. And once again, uh, the first half there was a huge discrepancy because we were playing in the post, we were attacking the basket, uh, and that's good to see. The other thing that allows you to do is set your defense, and uh, you know, you're, you're making them play. Um, out of the net, you've made free throws, and you kind of control the tempo as well. What did you think earlier? of the MVP chance today from the craft in the call? Yeah, he missed a free throw when they started shooting <laughs> that. So, it's, you know, uh, obviously I think the fans have a great admiration for Nikola, and uh, we all know how valuable Nikola Jokic is. We would not be in the position we are without him, and he's definitely deserving of MVP consideration. Thanks, everybody.